If you want to learn how to wire zone valves from scratch, learn how to trace out existing wiring, or how to diagnose zone valves, there's one core principle that once you understand it, you have what you need to perform any one of those three tasks. Every zone valve at its heart is just a relay, and a relay is a simple device where two separate circuits go to that device without ever interacting with one another, and when one circuit is activated, some mechanical thing happens to activate the second circuit. And these are the four wires we see coming out of our zone valve. Two yellow, sometimes black wires for one circuit, two red wires for the other. And both of these circuits do completely different things. Inside the zone valve, we have three main components. We have a motor, we have a gear, and we have what's called an end switch. Our motor is part of what we call the control circuit. This is the control that decides when the boiler will fire up and when it shuts down. The end switch is part of the boiler circuit that actually carries out that command. So our control circuit determines when we need heat and when we don't, which is controlled by the thermostat. And our boiler circuit carries out that command, which is controlled by the end switch. And the gear is the mechanical action that allows the control circuit to control the boiler circuit. So let's start with our control circuit. It's very simple. There's only three components to it. There is the motor itself. There is a thermostat that controls the circuit, turns it on and off. And then there's a power source, which is always going to be a transformer of some kind. Now, this can be a standalone transformer that's mounted right on the wall. Uh, it could be a transformer inside of an aquastat, or it could be a transformer inside of a zone relay panel. But either way, it's going to be a transformer that sends out 24 volts to power this circuit, and that circuit's going to come back to that power source again. Now what we're talking about here is a series circuit. So what that means is that when the electricity is flowing through this circuit, it has to go through each component one at a time. It has no other choices. There are no other paths it can take. So our 24 volts is going to leave the transformer. It's gonna to go to the R terminal on the thermostat. Now on the thermostat's W terminal, that is when heating is activated. So that wire is gonna to go to the zone valve motor or one of the yellow or black wires. Now, it doesn't matter which one, you can use either one. Once that 24 volts goes through the motor, um, it will then leave the motor and go back to the transformer. And this is the common wire. This is the wire everybody's looking for when they hook up their smart thermostats. So when our thermostat calls for heat, it's gonna close the switch between that R and W terminal. And that allows the 24 volts to leave the transformer power the entire circuit, which activates the motor in the zone valve. And the motor is going to start spinning, pushing that gear down on the end switch button. And once that button is pushed in, the boiler fires up. When the call for heat is satisfied, the thermostat opens that switch between the R&W terminal, the circuit loses power, and the motor retracts, pulling that gear back off the end switch, um, and the whole boiler shuts down. And here's a simple diagram that shows that same circuit we just went over. Now, what makes zone valve wiring so confusing and complicated for people when they're learning this stuff is that you never just have one zone valve or one thermostat. You always have multiple zone valves and thermostats. It is a zoning system after all. Now, what we just covered was a series circuit for one particular zone. When you have multiple zones, what you have are multiple series circuits. So each circuit is wired exactly the same way. When you have three zones like we have here, we don't need three transformers to power the zones. We can do it all on just one. But in order to do that, we have to resort to what's called parallel wiring. So basically what this means is that the 24 volts that comes off the transformer doesn't go to just one thermostat, it goes to all of them. So you're gonna have each wire from a thermostat connecting together in a splice that goes back to that transformer. So when our 24 volts leaves the transformer, it's gonna travel up to all three thermostats at all three R terminals. We're gonna have something similar on the other side of the circuit where the common wires are. Each wire coming off the zone valve motor will once again splice back together into a bundle 
following one wire as a common back to the transformer again. So we still have three separate series circuits here, just like we discussed before. The only thing that's changed is that on one side, they're all connected to get 24 volts from the same transformer. And on the other side, they're all connected to a common wire that completes all the circuits. Now, each one of these series circuits work independently because all three have their own switch in it, which is the thermostat. So the only circuits that can work here are the ones with closed switches or the thermostats that are actually calling for heat. So if zone two is calling for heat, the switch is going to close between R and W. The power is going to go ahead through the motor onto the common wires back to the transformer. Now, because zone one and zone three are not calling, those switches are open. So those particular motors do not have a complete circuit. So let's cover the end switch wiring real quick. And I'm not going to go really deep detail on the burner circuits because that can depend on the type of boiler you have. Um, I also have videos that do go deeper into the weeds on that stuff. So you could just watch those if you're interested. Now these end switches, they're kind of like the thermostat of the burner circuit. When our zone valve motor activates and that gear pushes in that little button on that end switch, it closes the switch for that circuit and the burner circuit for the boiler can be activated. The boiler can go through its startup sequence. Now, any one of these switches can turn the boiler on. We don't need all three of them, we just need one. And as long as any one of these end switches are pushed in, the boiler will continue running even if the others shut off. Now the 24 volts that runs through these end switches is not the same 24 volts from the transformer we've been talking about. This is a separate power source um, and that's why we have zone valves because we don't want to cross these two circuits over one another. We want to keep them separate. So just like our parallel circuit on our control side where we had 24 volts going up to each R terminal in the thermostat, we also have 24 volts here going to each end switch from the boiler. Uh, and this is part of the burner circuit. And just like our common wires on the other side of our zone valve motors, all the common wires on the other side of these end switches come back together and return back to the boiler to compete the circuit. So all the same, we have 24 volts going up to each individual end switch and whichever switch actually closes, 24 volts can carry through and return back to the boiler to activate the burner circuit. All right, so let's say the boiler's up and running and another thermostat starts calling for heat on a different zone. So our zone valve motor is going to start operating. Our gear is going to close another end switch and it's going to complete that circuit back to the boiler as well. Now, in the meantime, our first thermostat satisfied and it opens up that end switch. But we still have a closed end switch that keeps the burner circuit active and the boiler firing. We have to have all three end switches open in order for the boiler to fire down. And that's it. That's the basics of how a four wire zone valve works and how it's wired up.